Hello friends, I hope you, you all of you are doing great. I am just back from Aurangabad after visiting the Ajanta and Elora caves. That's why there is a slight delay in these videos. Another great thing is that our channel has just crossed 500 subscribers. I just noted it during my visit and I am really happy for that. I am also really happy that there are many people who are taking really interest in the subject and are asking doubts about the subject which I am able to clear also. And that is one of the goals of this channel, to build a community who loves engineering and especially electrical engineering. All right. So let us start with the today's topic, which is the magnetization curve of a DC machine. All right. So <clears throat> till now we have seen this particular equation here. We have seen Ea is equal to K phi into omega. This was the equation that we have derived as the EMF across the armature of a DC machine. Now we want to draw some characteristic curves for this. So I want to uh, draw a relation between Ea versus the field current if all right but in this particular equation i do not have the field current but i have flux value here so i have to find how is if related to the flux phi okay so if you plot a graph between the mmf field mmf which is equal to nf into if nf is the number of turns in the field winding versus the flux so what do you get? You get a graph like this. <clears throat> so this is the flux and this is the magnetomotive force NF into IF. So if you plot the graph, you see that it goes linear. That means when the magnetomotive force increases, the flux increases till a point where saturation occurs and the curve settles down like this. So finally it comes to the saturation point. All right. So clearly till this point, flux is proportional to if okay so now flux being proportional to if and from this particular equation you know that ea is proportional to flux and the angular speed i can tell that ea should be proportional to flux for a constant speed for a constant speed all right because this second term is here so we have to take that also under consideration but for my explanation of magnetization curve, I am going to keep this omega as constant and let us say that that value is some omega node. Okay. So to put the graph, let us draw the graph now, very simple graph. So it will be a relation between the field current IF versus the EMF across the armature. Okay. These are in volts and this is in amperes. Okay. So the curve would follow the same because IF is proportional to flux and flux is proportional to EA. I can tell the curve goes like this, the curve goes straight linear okay and at some point this flux becomes constant as you increase IF this flux becomes constant and once these two are constant the rate of increase of EA will reduce. So from here let me call this point here to gradually reduce and be something like this. So the linear area is still here okay and this IF is nothing but the voltage across the field winding divided by resistance of the field winding. Okay. Now, <coughs> there is a name for this particular point here. Okay. And that point is called the knee point. The knee point of the curve. So, let me just copy this here. I will take it to the next page. So, control C. So I am taking to the next page so that it will look better here now. So <clears throat> this point is called the knee point. Usually machines work at the knee point. Okay. So if it is a generator, it usually works at here. That means this will be the EMF induced EA1 for a particular field current IF, IF1. Okay. So this is the point where usually the machine works. So what is the knee point? The knee point is the point just before the saturation, okay, just before the saturation occurs. So this is basically the definition of knee point. Now why does the machine works at the knee point? The reason is to get the maximum possible, okay, maximum possible power per unit weight of the machine, okay. So to get maximum power per pound of the machine you actually work make it work near the knee point all right and another thing here is that 
at full load like for example a generator if it's producing a maximum amount of voltage at full load at this particular point you can see even if i increase if to a considerable higher value for example i'm increasing if to here the increase in emf is not very large so almost the machine is going to work in a constant rate there it's going to produce a constant emf so at full load the emf generated doesn't vary much with the field current okay so this is also an advantage here so this is basically the magnetization curve of a dc machine of course when we deal with each machine we will be referring this graph again and again so for series motor shunt motor we will be referring this each graph every time all right so with this let us start with the first type of motor which is called the separately excited dc motor okay separately excited dc motor now we are only dealing with motors now generators will come later now what is the definition how do you tell that a motor is separately excited a motor is said to be separately excited when the field winding okay the field winding has a separate voltage source has a separate voltage source other than the armature other than the armature there is a motor like that which is called the dc shunt motor but when somebody asks you what is a separately excited dc motor you should tell that it is such a motor where the field winding has a separate voltage source constant voltage source other than the armature all right so basically if you draw the diagram equivalent circuit it will look something like this okay so you are having a resistance which can change okay resistance adjustable and then you are having the resistance of the field winding resistance of the field winding and this i told you represents the flux created and let this be the v field okay v field of the field winding and the armature is going to come so this is the ra and this is the armature and this is the terminal voltage vt and this is il and this current is ia all right so this current is ia so you can see that this voltage is separate and this voltage is separate so you can control this separately and you can control this separately that makes it a c separately excited dc motor so let us now just write some equations here so you can see that these two are two different resistances okay so let me just club that into one resistance and let me call that as rf which is an adjustable resistance all right so let me just rub these two it is just for convenience of drawing sake so i'm just going to club it and together let me show it as a variable resistance so that i can vary the field current if required so in this part of the equation i can put if will be equal to vf divided by rf a very simple equation and in this point this voltage is ea remember that i'm neglecting the blush voltage drop here so i can write vt is equal to <coughs> ea plus ia into ra okay now this term is their il the same il is going to flow through the armature therefore in separately excited dc motors the il will be same as the ia all right il is the incoming current from the source okay so these two equations are important <coughs> now with this let us move to the second type of motor okay which is called the shunt dc motor shunt dc motor is very similar to separately excited motor but the only thing is that it shares the same voltage okay the shunt the field winding and the armature winding have the same voltage so, so let us put up that here so the second one is the shunt dc motor okay so in that case what you will have is <coughs> you are having your armature here all right this is your armature so ra ea all drawn well and here itself you will have your field winding so this is your rf sorry for that there is some installer update this is a very disturbing thing yeah it's gone and uh, so let us continue here so this is your terminal voltage vt all right this is a terminal voltage vt now you can clearly note that if the voltage of the field and the uh, 
VT were same, the shunt motor and the series motor will have the same characteristics. If VF was same as VT, they will have the same characteristics. So unless or otherwise specifically mention the terminal characteristics of the DC shunt motor as well as the DC separately excited motor will be the same. So let me just put it that here. If the VT is equal to VF, the characteristics of the DC shunt motor is similar to DC separately excited motor going very slow so that this thing should be imprinted inside your mind okay so let us put up some things here so this is IL now the current is branching into two here so one will go through the armature and the other will go through the <coughs> field okay so I can write some equations here so IL will be equal to IA plus IF simple circuit theory here and VF will be equal to sorry IF will be equal to this current voltage divided by resistance so VT divided by RF okay and VT again will be equal to see the same VT is going to come here okay VT is equal to EA plus IA into RA. So this is a very formal introduction of the DC series motor sorry the DC separately excited motor and the DC shunt motor. In the next lecture let us start with the terminal characteristics of the DC series motor sorry again I am telling it wrong DC separately excited motor as well as the DC shunt motor. So I will see you in the next lecture. So please if you like this video please like share and subscribe the channel and I will see you in the next video. Thank you.